So now we have discussed several approach for calculating GCD of two numbers A and B and writing code for that. Now let's see how do we calculate GCD using another approach. So for understanding this approach, let's go back to the method that we used in math while in school for calculating the GCD. So let's say we are given A as 56 and B as 21. For calculating the GCD of this, what we did was we keep 56 here, 21 here. We do the division, we get the remainder 14. Now what we will do is we will bring this particular number here at this particular place. So initially this was my B and this was my A. So whatever is inside this particular box is A and whatever is the divisor here is B. So here what we will do is we will divide 21 by 14. So I put 1 here, this is by 14, I get 7. So now I divide 14, we bring 14 here with 7. 7, 2 is 14, 0. So I get 0 here and we get the dividend as 7. We get the GCD as 7. So my GCD for 56 and 21 is 7. Now if you observe something here, initially my B was 21, A was 56. What happened here? My latest a is equivalent to my previous B. So A is equal to previous B. And what happened to B? This B is nothing but A mod B. So we divided A with B and whatever was the remainder become the new B. So my latest B became A mod B. Now again what is happening here? My latest A is previous B which was 14 and my B became A mod B. So this was this particular A mod this particular B. So we kept on doing this until we got 0. So following this approach, this is known as Euclidean's algorithm for or of division, Euclidean's algorithm of division. So if we try and write it in a formula, it says GCD A comma B is equivalent to GCD B comma A mod B. So if we have to calculate GCD of 21 comma 56, then we first calculate GCD of 14 comma 21. Or better to say that, so we can write that GCD of 56 comma 21 is equivalent to GCD of 21 comma 14 which is equivalent to GCD of 14 comma 7 which is equivalent to GCD of 7 comma 0 and we have seen that GCD of a comma 0 is equivalent to a and gcd of 0 comma b is equivalent to b so using this particular formula which is same as this we will calculate our gcd so obviously what we will do is we will keep dividing our largest number or we'll keep dividing our b we'll keep reducing our b to a mod b unless we get 0 and after we get 0, we will simply return the value of A. So here I am repeating what we are doing is we are following this formula. And just following this formula won't help. We come up with the code that we keep on dividing B and we keep on reducing B unless B becomes 0. Now the question is how do we write code for this? So for writing code with this, we need recursion again. So let's write down the code for this using recursion. So obviously we can write it down using iteration as well but here we will write the code using recursion. So here we are writing code to find GCD of two numbers using Euclidean's algo of division.
So what are the formulas that we know? We know that GCD a comma 0 is equivalent to A, GCD 0 comma B is equivalent to B and GCD A comma B is equivalent to GCD B comma A mod B. Now let's try to write a code for this. So let's say we write int GCD. Here we are going to return integer as the GCD hence the return type is integer. We take two parameters int a comma int b. We write down the base conditions that if a is equal to 0 return b and if b is equal to 0 return a. So if you see in this case we are reducing b in each and every call. So unless we get a situation in which the initial value of a is b then generally this condition will suffice because we are reducing b every time. So eventually it's b who will first be 0. So if we know that a is never going to be 0 in the input then we can just put this particular base condition. Now this is my base condition what we have to write is we have to return gcd we have to use this particular formula b comma a mod b so this particular code gives me the gcd so let's see that whether this works for few test cases so again taking the same test case let's say a is 56 and b is 21 so initially a will get value 56 b is 21 none of these will be true we come here initial call is 56 comma 21 then gcd 21 comma 14 gets called then eventually gcd 14 this b is becoming a every time and our b is becoming 21 mod 14 our b will be 21 mod 14 which is 7 now again what will happen we'll have gcd this comes here 7 comma 14 mod 7 which is 0. So eventually this will become true b is equal to 0 and 7 is returned. Now let's say we have a as 21 and b as 56. What happens in that case? So in that case let's see what happens. So initially gcd 21 comma 56 is called. Eventually what happens? This 56 comes here and this becomes 21 mod 56 this becomes 21 mod 56 which is 21 so if b is greater than a then in the first step first gcd b comma a mod b the swapping actually happens so we get 56 comma 21 and after this particular process follow so this is how we are getting the gcd now if we talk about the time complexity let's see what is the time complexity for this now if we talk about the time complexity, the time complexity of this is going to be O of log of n where n could be maximum of a or b. So that was about finding GCD using various approach.